Morning everyone, we're about to start our morning shift. We milk about 350 cows now, and the first ladies from group one are about to come into the holding area. After I finished the morning chores there, our nutritionist came out and we had a conversation, walked around the farm, just talked about uh, the cows, how they're producing, what we're feeding, what our steps are going to be moving forward. Uh, we also just got into our alfalfa silage pit, so that's another thing that we were talking about, how we're going to implement that and uh, start to feed that. So we have someone that comes out every three months or so to the dairy and he walks around with us. And he, his job is literally just talking to dairy farmers and talking about how they're managing their farm and seeing if they can improve anything. So it's good to have someone to come on to the farm that's uh, not there every day with some new ideas. Maybe they see things from a different angle and uh, can catch some things that you as a farmer can. So that's what happened to the rest of my morning. But we're out in the corrals now this afternoon and I got the case loader here. And that's because we're going to be tackling a problem that's been kind of pressing in our corrals here for a couple of weeks now and it's starting to become pretty prevalent now. So, as you guys know, we just have the basic feed bunk. There's concrete, 10 feet of concrete behind the feed bunk, and the rest is all wind break out of two by sixes, rough cut two by sixes. In the winter time, you gotta clear the manure off of the back here, um, away from the back of the bunks, otherwise it starts to build up pretty high. And we usually like to wait till it's zero degrees for a couple days, and then we'll get in these corrals, start to scrape it away. But if that doesn't happen, if that nice weather just doesn't show up on time, we got to get in there and do it while it is pretty frozen solid, which is what I'm going to be doing this afternoon. You can already see kind of that this feed has been here for a couple days. The snow, the frost is on there. They're only able to reach up to here anymore and it's kind of rounded. So they're not even able to go straight down. It's rounded and they're only able to reach maybe 70% of this bunk now. So there's a bunch of old feed that just kind of stays at the bottom of this bunk now. It does not go bad, it doesn't rot, and that's because it is frozen, but still it's gonna start to be wasted when it just starts to flop into the corral and that gets very expensive. So we're out here with the case loader. We're gonna try and hack away at that big slab of frozen solid manure. This is corral three, the corral we're gonna be starting in. And this is probably the worst corral this curb here, I believe, is 12 inches, so right there, it's above the curb, so that's probably 14 to 16 inches thick of frozen crap. And uh, cows will eventually start to go down on their knees, try to get to this feed bunk, but we want to avoid that, because that's not so comfortable. We also want to make sure there's no restrictions for intake. These girls are growing. they got to eat as much food as possible. On top of that, it's cold out here. Another reason they need to be eating as much as possible, that's literally how they stay warm. We got a bit of a start into the corral. You can see some concrete's exposed. Uh, a lot of people, they think that once you get a bit of concrete exposed, it'll just be kind of easy from that point. It'll just kind of peel up and flake off of the concrete, but that's not the case at all. It does sometimes happen when it's been around zero for a week, but you gotta remember this builds up from the bottom up. So 
the day those cows start to crap on that pavement, it starts to freeze right onto it solid and the concretes and the manure almost come one. Um, so it's, it's pretty difficult still, even once you get a start where you're just riding entirely on this cutting blade. Luckily we have a really good cutting blade. It's pretty new on the bucket of the loader and that's kind of the only thing that's getting the job done right now. I'm sliding like crazy too. It's, it's super slippery, especially right into the beginning of this corral. Uh, every time I was hitting this manure here, the back end of the loader is just pulling over to that gate and uh, I'm really trying to be careful not to hit this thing. You guys can see it's already a little bowed. But, let's keep hacking away. Yes, that means I don't have to go fuel up for like another two hours. <laughs> Almost done our first corral, probably been in here for an hour and a half. It's pretty brutal, but uh, as soon as you start piling manure in the corrals, cows all start to climb on it, play king of the hill. I guess it's queen of the hill in this corral, it's all heifers. Finished our first corral, took two full hours, so very time consuming. And that's all the manure that we scraped up. Pretty decent sized pile actually. I think it was two months ago since we cleaned it off. So that's a lot of crap. Now the heifers are gonna have fun climbing all over that pile. We'll scoop it out later. It doesn't really make sense to have someone standing by the gates when all the time is spent hacking away instead of wheeling it back and forth. So we'll just come after and clean this out. Another thing I gotta do is now I gotta shovel these bunks out a little bit to all these big chunks of manure. They kind of just flip over into it. It's hard to avoid it. Eventually you say the heck with it. We'll just scoop it out with a shovel when we're done. I also remember the last time that I showed you guys this job on the YouTube channel, someone had commented that you should spread some chopped straw on the concrete now when it's perfectly clean and that might make it easier to clean off. Uh, this is actually a pretty good idea. I don't know, it's, it's another thing to do and some more work again and hopefully you know, 90% of the time we'll be able to get into these corrals on time. It's just that one-off time, like right now, where we're kind of struggling with it. So, great idea. I do read the comments and I see good ideas all the time like that in there. So I appreciate that. But uh, yeah, we'll head on to the next corral. Our guys that are milking, Maxime and Fetter, just came and got me. The crowd gate is not moving backwards anymore. It's only moving forward. We've had this problem before. I think I know exactly what it is. I think uh, there's a little safety here when it gets to the back. It's supposed to be pushed forward and that stops the drive from pushing the crowd gate back. But over time, you need to keep this thing greased and if you don't do a good enough job, then uh, it's gonna stick and it won't let it go backwards anymore. It thinks it's all the way at the back and it just kills the drive, doesn't let it go anymore. So, only one way to find out. grab some grease and grease that thing a little bit so it doesn't stick anymore. I'm just in the shop grabbing a bottle of spray grease for that crowd gate and I figure I'll show you guys real quick what we got in the shop right now. Our JF Stahl Forge Harvester is getting a complete makeover. So uh, you'll notice the spout is gone. I don't know where that is. It's maybe being rebuilt in the city or something. The whole pickup header has been taken off of the front of that thing. The auger has been taken out. There was some shafts and some bearings that were worn out, so that's getting rebuilt. I think maybe new flighting is being put on that as well. The spout must be getting rebuilt somewhere. Um, yeah, it's, it's getting a full makeover, that's for sure. And the reason why we do this is so that hopefully, come summertime when we get into the fields again, this thing can run reliably. Hopefully our mechanic finds everything that's possibly wrong with it and fixes it now instead of while we're pressed for time chopping in the summer. So we just absolutely doused it in this bottle of spray grease and that's hopefully gonna prevent it from sticking anymore. Luckily I knew exactly what the problem was because the exact same thing happened to us two years ago now I think. 
Crowdgate wouldn't go backwards, would only go forwards. Called the dealership, asked them for some tips, couldn't figure it out. They sent uh, a technician out, he couldn't figure it out. Took some parts off of that thing, put new parts on there, and then they sent a different tech out, and uh, he walked up to it, switched it over. Problem solved. So uh, you could go through a lot of trouble for just such a simple little thing where realistically it just needs to be maintained and then you'll have a problem. So uh, shout out to Alex, Carter, and Andre. Those were the three technicians involved in that. Well, that's all I'm gonna do for this evening. We got a lot done. So three Corrells now fully cleaned. Uh, the two worst ones for sure, Corell six, Corell three. These are very full Corells, full of heifers and uh, we got them both cleaned out completely. So that is gonna make eating from the bunks a million times easier for these girls. Well, it's pretty much the end of the day, so I'm about to go home, but I quickly want to show you guys some parts that we got. This is the air hose for the crowd gate. Uh, looks like there's two in this box, and there's another box underneath. So there's three lines that go up and down that entire length. And this is just a replacement for the current one that's on there. It is wearing through and starting to leak. We also got the parts we ordered for the foot bath, that airbag to get the door working again. But while I was fixing it, I didn't realize there was some plastic bushings in there and they fell down the drain. So, got to order some new ones of those. And we also are going to get a new door liner right away as well. Um, a new plastic rubber liner for that door so it doesn't leak at all. And then we should get this thing back up and snuff. So, probably could have been going now, but. Uh, didn't know they were there and they fell down the drain, which really sucks. Anyway, that's gonna be it for today's video. Again, I hope you guys all had a very happy new year and I wish you success in the coming year. I'm gonna leave you with a bit of a clip here of my mom making olibola, which is a Dutch traditional New Year's food. Uh, they're very good, so I'll put that clip on there as well as some fireworks. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Check out the Instagram, at SassDutchKid, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Here we're in the house with mom. What are you making? Olibola. So for the people who don't know what those are, what the heck are they? Uh, Dutch tradition. For New Year's? You betcha. Okay. They're like a freighter, I guess, <clears throat> with some raisins and yeah. So that's your dough? Yep. It's almost done, but I have another batch. Well, let's get to here. These are ready. Take them out. They're actually pretty healthy because that's vegetable oil. <laughs> the vegetables are healthy, right? Yep, you betcha. <laughs> Very healthy. Nice hot oil. Go down and they come back up. Go. Pretty good. Good, good, Jan. No, yeah. shake it.